Hello guys, this is Panzmeister 36 and today's video is going to be a kind of post build review as opposed to an inbox review where I look at the kit unbuilt in the box. This one is actually going to be looking at it after I finish building it so I can give you guys a more in-depth idea about what it was like to build. The kit I'm going to be reviewing here is the Stug 3 Ausf F8 late production with Winterketten by Dragon. It's a fairly recent kit, I'm pretty sure. I think it came out in about 2010 or so. So it's one of the last uh, kits that they made before they went downhill with all that DS track stuff. So it's fairly recent, but it still has all the goodies from the older series. So this kit was actually very kindly sent to me by Adam Mann. He said he was going to send me some Winter Ketten for my last Panzer III project, and then I actually ended up getting this whole kit from him that comes with, with Winter Ketten. So that was very awesome, and I'm super grateful for that. In the cards up above here, I will link his inbox review of the kit. It's very good, very in-depth, as he usually does. He gives a very clear picture of all the parts that come in it, all the lineage of this kit, and also a very good review of what the instructions are like. So, now let's actually get into the review. So as we begin here, I must first say that I did do a couple of modifications to this kit and I'll explain them fully here, explaining why I did them and also how I did them. Some of them were with parts that came with the kit actually, so I'll go over those. Firstly, I did add this metal gun barrel myself. It was like $5 and I just couldn't resist. It looks really good and it's super cheap and easy and it adds a nice level of detail to the kit. Though these do come with, all these stoke kits, they do come with a very nice one-piece slide molded plastic barrel. So you do get a little bit of a seam along it, but it's not like a gap when you actually have a halved barrel. It's two parts you put together side on. Um, also, you do get nice muzzle brake with the kit. As you can see, this barrel actually has the single baffle early type muzzle brake, the ball one, which you usually see on like a Panzer uh, 4 F2. This also comes in the kit as a plastic muzzle brake as well. It was on one of the sprues hidden away in the corner, but I did manage to find it. So if you want to do this kind of barrel, which were on a couple of Stugs as surplus from Panzer IV F2s, you can go ahead and do that with the plastic parts that are supplied in the kit. Another modification I did to the Stug was actually adding these two spare track brackets here and on the opposite side. They are shown on the box art right here, as you can see. Um, though they're not included in the kit. And also I noticed that on that picture that the box art is based off of, they're there as well. Um, so to replicate them, because I thought they looked kind of cool, I just found uh, one of the Stug G sprues in this kit, because since it's a late Stug F8, there's a lot of parts from the Stug G in there. And so you actually do get the spare track bracket, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, which goes along the back of the superstructure on a Stug G. So it kind of goes along from about here to there. And I just found that it wasn't used at all, so I just kind of cut off the ends and cut the rest of it in half and just kind of 45 degree off the angles there so it fit on nicely. Glued it on and it looks basically just like it does on the box art there so I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go around the outside of the tank here and just show you some of the details and some of the options that they provide you with and explain which ones I went with. So first of all, um, the fenders have a very nice texture on them. They're also very very thin. As you can see on the front here I can just kind of bend the actual front mudguard thing by hand and just bend a little bit because you usually see like on German tanks those things are quite bent and sometimes they're even like torn off. I uh, just did a little bit of damage there. I think it was good. Uh, first option that they provide you with is having the tow hook eyelets in the tool clamp as this one is. It's like molded on as one part. We're having the actual clamps empty. They don't provide you with the eyelet without the clamp molded on. So at the other end of this tow cable I actually had to just sand the clamp off of the part have it just be like the tow hook eyelet. And then I obviously here I went with the option of having an empty one. I did widen the hole a little bit because it was quite small. I just used a number 11 blade, stuck it in there kind of like this and just kind of like rotate it around, you know, just widened it up. And then another option for both of these options was having a, um, a wing nut replace the tiny, tiny, tiny little molded on nub there. It's microscopic. You kind of like cut it off and then put the wing nut on there. And the wing nut is barely bigger than the part that you cut off actually is. I could do it because I'm young and have very good vision, but if that's not an option for you, it's barely noticeable, honestly. For the tool clamp over here for the S hooks, they also gave you that option again of cutting off the little nub and replacing it with a wing nut. As you can see right there, once again I did it, but it was very tedious and I, <laughs> I would recommend it if you can do it because it looks a little better, but it's not necessary, as like I said. 
the jack is the usual thing you get in these kits. It's about 10 parts. You get that in like all pens or threes, pens or fours, stugs. It's very well de detailed and you can actually kind of extend it out. So if you're going to do a diorama, you can probably have it in action. The jack block is, again, the standard. Very nice, molded on a wooden texture to it. I think it looks great. If you look at the back here, you can see that there's a photo etch part, which is an option. It's this little tiny kind of like thing that's sticking up there. You have to bend it a couple of times. Pretty sure it's to stop in real life the fender from popping up all the way onto the fender itself, like the little mug guard at the end here from popping up. You do have a plastic option for it, which is a little bit thick, I guess you could say. Um, this photo etch part isn't that small. I could bend it pretty easy with some standard pliers and it looks a little better to me, so I went with it. Um, you also have the tools on the kit as the standard thing you get in these smart kits, which is molded on tool clamps, as you can see right there is one of them. They're very, very good actually. On this kit I noticed that there was even less flash than usual on all the tools, so the seam lines on the handles were extremely faint, which was great. Though a modification I did was actually I kind of thinned down, as you can see there's this little part right there on the top, which is like the actual latch. I kind of like sanded away this end from the top and also from the other end just to kind of thin it down make it look a little more realistic when you get photo watch options for these it's even better but I think that it's actually pretty good the way it's molded on the sprue and just thinning it a little bit more adds a little nice touch to it over here you can see another photo watch option which is either plastic or metal which is that part on the other side of the mud guard which is this thing here um, I go with the photo watch one all the time because it's pretty big not too hard to work with just glue it on and it's pretty easy to bend. It's thin, it looks a little better than the plastic part. Um, and also there's again this little part here which I mentioned on the other side. If you look down here you can see the tow cable eyelet I was talking about here. I had to cut off the the clamp as I mentioned but it wasn't that much work at all and I have it attached to the actual little mounting thing there for the tow hook or the tow cable using an S hook which is one of the ones provided in the kit. On the engine deck here, you can see that I only added one of the spare tires just because I wanted to. It looks cool this way. And you also get this option of having this kind of like spare track bracket along the rear there, which you see on most of these F8s. I'm not sure if it was factory applied or if crews did that themselves. Not sure at all, but it looks cool with some tracks in there. So looking at the superstructure rear engine deck area of the Stug F8 here, there's a lot of good things to come in this kit, which you don't usually get in Dragon's Stug kits. And for example, I have one of their House of G's here, and I've built like four of these. So first of all, I think most importantly, is actually give you the full-length antenna, which are these things here. And this looks really awesome, and I wish Dragon gave you that on all of their Stug kits, but sadly they don't. On all of the G's I've built, they only ever give you these little things here, which is where they would be mounted in real life, as you can see, kind of like in front of my knife blade there. I think they should really give you these old Stug G kits, because it looks awesome but it's a little bit of a disappointment. I'm really impressed that they give you that in the Stug F here. Related to that, they also give you in the Stug F8 kit this, which is the spare antenna holder, which are like the little mounting things on the end, with the actual antenna mounted in between. It's like one piece molded. And that's really awesome because on the Stug G kits from Dragon, you only ever get the little end parts there, empty, with no uh, antenna in between. As you can see, for example, there's one here, and there's one kind of on the opposite side there. I think that's really cool as well. Um, I'm not using this in the Stug F8 kit because I kind of want to save it for a Stug G in the future. So on this kit I actually used some spares I had which are the empty ones from a Stug G. Mounted them here and on the opposite side because that's where that part goes kind of like underneath the hatches along there to the opposite side. And also I had to kind of like scratch build a little center bracket which is on the F8 but not on the Stug G. So that's a little thing I made myself because I kind of want to save this awesome bit for a Stug G. Another option you get in this kit is having the machine gun shield mounted either up or down. I mount it down because I just want to be able to see inside better and I don't want it like a machine gun mounted in there or anything like that. If it were up, this gives you an idea what it would look like. This shield's a little different on the F8 versus on the Stug G. But I'm pretty sure that as on the Stug G, if you're mounting the F8 shield up, it should be braced up with the actual front hatch of the loader's like dual hatch thing. Another thing you get in this kit, which you get on all Dragon Stugs, which is great, is this part here, it's a photo etch on both sides. You get the photo etch engine grills. If you're going to go with any of the PE in this kit, you should really use this one because it looks great. It's not hard to clean up, it's like about a point there and one there. I think only two points, you really have to sand down a little bit. 
where it's mounted on the fret and then you just put them on it looks great much better than the mesh things you get in some of the older Tamiya kits and uh, also earlier when I was mentioning what I used to make the spare track brackets on the front here I was just referencing this little like spare armor bracket along the rear of this Doug G here and now we get into like the weirdest thing on this kit it's pretty cool but it was kinda weird to work with it's a photo wedge a multi-piece but also plastic kind of like guard thing over the periscope here uh, first of all most of the F8s I've seen actually don't have this on so if you don't want to do it go ahead don't add it they have, give you a plastic option as well but it looks really bad because it's really thick the photo wedge one isn't that hard to work with it's just you have to be really careful they give you a jig um, basically this part is like has all these little ribs on it it's a flat piece with all them sticking off you have to bound it on the jig kind of fold them all down around it and then you have this other kind of like full watch ring as you can see there which then sits about halfway up which then you glue on and then you take the whole thing and then you glue it onto this plastic kind of like ring that goes around the whole thing at the bottom and then you glue that onto the actual superstructure roof now you have to be very careful because the jig they provide you with to do the folding of that big piece all the ribs in the middle um, it's great but the, it's not symmetrical. There's different amounts of ribs around this kind of like rounded edge here than there are around the other rounded edge in the back there. So if you have the jig around the wrong way, it's not going to work out because there's three here. And I think there's like five on that side, so it's going to mess you up. Also, you have to make sure that you have the photo wedge part on the jig the right way because if you have it on upside down, there's a little gap here, kind of from about there to there where the um, the gunner's periscope looks through. If you make the part backwards, that part is going to be, or that gap is going to be actually at this end, which is wrong, because you're making like a mirror image of it. I did that at first accidentally and I had to fix it. It wasn't that hard, because I hadn't actually glued on the ring parts yet, but it's just you have to be really careful what you're doing. But I do know that some of these kits have this as a pre molded part, which is odd. Like it's a pre formed photo wedge thing in a little plastic box inside the kit. I'm not sure what's up with that, but I know that some of these of this kit have that inside instead of just this one, which has a couple of full wedge and plastic parts which you had to kind of like bend and work together. So before we look at the interior supplied in the kit, we're going to quickly go over the lower hull and we're going to look at the wheels and tracks and stuff like that. So obviously this kit's advertised coming with Winter Ketten, which are these things here, which are basically standard 3-4 tracks, Panzer 3-4 tracks, with the this kind of like little wing things on the side which give it more surface area so the tank wouldn't sink in mud or snow. In the kit you get enough of these for both sides obviously you get them as a magic track so they're already cleaned up for you in a bag you basically just have to glue them together. Now as you always get at least Panzer 3 4 tracks from the magic tracks you get a very faint pin mark there and there on either side of the guide horn. Basically if you want to do that clean up you can but they're very very faint and if you do any mud effects on the tank at all it's basically going to be covered up so I don't bother except for these these are like going to be spare tracks so actually sand off those pin marks but they're very very faint so on this Doug 3 here I obviously don't have those tracks mounted I have instead normal Panzer 3 4 tracks and these ones actually come in the kit as well as a bonus which means that you get magic, magic tracks which are normal Panzer 3 4 tracks and magic tracks which are the winter cannon Panzer 3 4 tracks which is really awesome because now you have basically a spare set of tracks a thing though was that these tracks had bigger pin marks in the same locations as I mentioned on the winter cannon they had bigger pin marks on them than usual which is kind of a little bit off, but whatever. They're a bonus anyways. You're probably not going to use them in this kit. You want to use the winter cannon because they're awesome. And I didn't clean them up, as I said, on this kit because there's going to be mud, so they're probably not going to be visible, and I'm too lazy to go through and clean up every single one. Another thing you might be able to notice is that this kit also has these things here, which are called ice cleats. They're like these little triangular things right about there. They're very, very small, but... Basically, they go on every, I think, third, fourth, or fifth length in, in real life. This kit comes with them, which were usually mounted on winter cat and or tanks in the winter so they could grip on icy surfaces. And that should give you enough for two tanks. So I had enough to do the Panzer through the winter cat, as I mentioned before, and also enough to do most of this one, minus a couple of links on the actual bottom under the wheels where the tracks are facing the ground anyway, so you can't even see them. I think it's a really nice touch. They come already cleaned up for you in a bag, much like magic tracks, and you just kind of stick them on. Also, looking at the either wheel here, you get the standard two little PE rings, one for the interior of each half of the other wheel. Those are a little tricky to work with if you're a beginner probably because you have to do some cleanup on them. Especially some cleanup on the inner edge which is kind of rounded. But they're pretty visible. I mean you could probably skip them if you don't really care but 
they're a little bit obvious and I think that they're a nice touch. Here you can also see the wheels which are up to Dragon's usual standard. It says continent toe on them instead of towel because of copyright reasons, but if you really want to you can basically cut off the upper like thing at the end of the U to make an L. I don't care, it's going to be mud on it again, but it's pretty funny how they actually have to do that. But of course no flash at all, just a very faint seam on every single wheel, but that's how it is in basically every kit ever. So you basically have to go along and just kind of like sand over the whole thing. And there's molding points on there anyway, so it's not too much work. All the rest of the suspension is great. And also the torsion bars and whole suspension system there is actually kind of workable if you want. But they do have these little pins which kind of like lock into the rear of the swing arms, which basically makes the wheel go up and down, which all set them at the standard length. If you want, you can basically cut off those pins and it kind of like pose the suspension however you want. So if you want to leave the interiors of these kits like removable so you can paint it up and then glue it all together and then paint the exterior. You have to have in some sections. I'm going to go over them here. Basically the roof. This is similar to the Stug G's as well. I also glue this part on which is usually actually goes on the front there but if you do then you can't actually get the gun in or it's very hard too so I've actually got to glue to the roof here. Next up I have the actual gun breech. It's a separate part like this. Then I've got the gun like front bit here. Also you can also pop these two parts apart if I've got it loose enough. There we go. Two more parts there. And I can also take off this entire thing as well, just pop it straight up, but I'm going to leave it in right now for demonstration purposes. So the interior for the fighting compartment that you get in this kit is actually really good. One thing you get on this kit that you don't on all the Stug G's is the two MP40s mounted right here and here, which are very obvious because you have these two big open hatches right here, so they're like right in the way. You also do get all the photo wet you see on them here, which is like the little attaching thing there, and then the slings, which is really awesome. This little boxy thing here, I'm not sure what it is. But I actually just built it out of parts in the kit that kind of like I had to like put those bolts on different parts. I just used a bunch of spares that it came with and kind of assembled whatever that box is. I'm not sure what it actually is, but it's supposed to be there, whatever it is. Now looking over here, you can also see that the kit has a radio and a binocular stand here. The binocular stand can be done this way or it can be rotated around sticking up with the periscopes out of the, um, the hatch. Now you get these in the kit, the, ra the little bit of wiring you might be able to see on the radio is stuff that I've added myself because it should have some wiring on it. The little seat down here for the commander is also in the kit, but the little photo watch brackets down there and like the gas mask and stuff like that was stuff that I added myself just to add a little more detail. It's The stuff I've done there is pretty accurate, it's just mainly looking close enough to what it does in real life because the interior isn't that visible that far down, so I'm just kind of like hinting at the interior. So on this side of the superstructure, you once again get two radio sets on this side, and I've added that wiring myself as I did on the other side as well. All the details down there is again stuff I just kind of like threw in there to make it look like that as an interior farther down. And also there really should be some ammo storage right here, like some shell racks and stuff. Uh, they don't give you anything for that, and I don't have anything to replicate it. But it's a little bit of a detail that they kind of should add because it's kind of obvious, but if you have any figures in the hatches, you can't see that far down anyways. And also the gun breach itself kind of covers up most of the empty space inside the interior here. And on that note, here is the gun breach assembly itself. It's very nice. You have all the details you need over here for the gunner station, like his seat, the, the traverse wheels and elevation wheels. You get the actual gun sight itself with the periscope here being a clear part, so you can actually mask off the end because this does stick through the roof, kind of where that PE mesh thing I was talking about earlier is like this. So when you mask off the end, you paint the outside, then you can actually just remove the mask and you have clear which looks good. All the details here are very nice for the actual whole mechanism itself, the breech. You can have the breech block, which is a little thing here, basically open or close, if they're like ready to load a shell in or they've closed it to fire. The only things I've added to this are, first of all, you don't have need to do this, but I added a shell bag. There should be this thing here to catch the empty shells. This is actually wrong. The one I've added is wrong. It's for a Panzer III. It's for 50mm shells. This one is a 75mm gun but it's the only one I had. It looks close enough. Once again, I'm just kind of like hinting at an interior, so I don't really care. It looks decent. The only modification that I've done here, which is necessary, as well as the only modification on the entire kit I think is necessary, is adding this weld seam right here. Basically, it's pretty visible because you get about half of it probably visible because of a gap like that when you put the roof on, which is realistic. Often you see them having dra draped a tarp over there, but there should be a weld bead along the top of the reciprocator here. Basically, to do that, I use some stretch sprue when I glued the two halves here together, which is for the reciprocator housing. There's a gap there anyway, so I just filled it with some stretch sprue, which is too big for the hole, and then I softened it with some extra thin, so the plastic kind of got mushy, and then I took my knife and basically made a bunch of little, like, cuts in it to make it look like a weld bead. 
To wrap up this review here, I would really recommend this kit to basically anybody, even a beginner, because honestly, it's not that hard at all. And the only thing you might find intimidating, you can kind of deal with, such as like the photo watch details. You can swap most of them with the plastic parts they give you in the kit. The photo watch you can't replace, such as like the MP40s, well, you can just close the hatches just if you don't want to show that stuff. The photo watch for the idler wheels and the little part that kind of goes where the fender meets the uh, the grill assembly here. You can leave those off. I did that on my first Doug kit and it still looks great. And finally, the grill here is a very, very easy thing to do. It's a big part. You just cut off the sprue, or like the, I guess the PE fret is what it's called. You sand off both the ends where there's like a little nub, glue it on, and it looks great. Um, another thing a beginner might find intimidating are the metal tow cables, which, you know, they're a little stiff, but I do it this way. Basically, I super glue it in to the part here which is already glued on, clamp it down, let it dry. Then super glue the next area, clamp it down, let it dry, and just kind of like work along, clamping and super gluing, letting it dry, and I kind of just like slowly form it however I like, and it looks great. And finally, as a beginner, you might find the tracks a little bit intimidating, but I did a great video explaining how I deal with them on different Stug kit, just like this one. Um, there's a ton of links, and it looks a little bit scary at first, but if you just do them in little sections like I show in my video, and glue them all together in the end, it looks really good, and you can leave it off and paint it separately, which is really helpful as well. The quality of molding in the kit was excellent because there was no flash on any of the parts at all and some of the parts that basically have seam lines on them anyways like the tools and the wheels and stuff like that had even smaller ones than you usually end up with in a dragon kit which is already a very very small seam as expected but it was even smaller so it was great. I also love the uh, the tow cables, the option of having them in or not, the magic tracks you can have them as normal tracks or winter ketten which you should do because winter ketten are awesome. You can have the spare tires in or not, you can have the spare track bracket on the rear, you can have hatches open or closed, you can have the machine gun up or down, you have tons of options. You can also do a little bit of modification and have the suspension workable, and the gun is actually workable so you can move it up and down a little bit. I also love how they finally gave us these antenna in the kit, finally, it's so good. But overall, it was just really fun to build. It was well engineered, and finally the instructions were perfect. I think it was the first time I've ever, I've ever built Dragon Kit where the instructions, I didn't notice a single mislabeled part or part magically appearing on between steps. So it was like just so much fun. It's the best kit I've ever, I've ever built from Dragon, and I'm really happy with it. A huge thank you goes out to Adam Mann for sending this kit to me. As I mentioned in the video just a second ago, it was probably the best Dragon Kit I've ever built, and it's going to be up there in my list of just like top five kits ever that I've built at least. It was just so good. <laughs> Nothing wrong, just fell together. Just so much fun and I enjoyed also doing all the little modifications I did. I only wish I could have also put the Winter Cat on it because it looks so cool, but Adam sent me the kit so I could put the Winter Cat on my Panzer III and I did that and no regrets, that looked awesome as well. So this also still looks really cool and I can't wait to finish it up. Another big thank you goes out to Stevie Gibson for sending me a book called On Display The Stoke Three. That was really helpful for me because it basically contains a bunch of modelers build up and just like what they did to modify Stugs and it was really helpful for all the interior details that I added myself because it gave me some good photos there and Stevie also sent me some good reference photos as well as uh, he gave me a good tip which was thinning down the uh, tool clamps that I did there it just really helped improve it and that book as well as reference photos he sent me are going to be really useful for when I paint and weather this thing and I'm going to do some videos on that so they'll be coming up in the future soon but that finishes off this video here guys Hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments about how I could, um, you know, improve this video or like improve more videos, I'm going to do like this because I kind of want to do this now instead of inbox reviews, which just shows you the parts. I want to do a post build review, which shows you what the kit actually is like when you build it, which is kind of why we buy the kit to build it. So if you have any comments about how I could improve this, if you have any recommendations about how I could modify these videos in the future, show different aspects of it or anything like that, please feel free to post them. I just kind of went over the kit in general and any modifications I would recommend doing or all the ones I did. Basically, I just kind of showed off the kit built up and what it was like, and I think that was what a post-build review should be like, but please, recommendations are helpful because this video is, or like all these videos I make, are for you guys, and your feedback is well-valued because, you know, it's not for me, it's for you guys. I want to make the videos what you guys want. So as always, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.